Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are painting this adorable Easter spring Highland cow. So uh, this is an example of the uh, painting that I do. This is the model that I use in my in-studio classes, and it will definitely be my inspiration for today. And I've got a painting kit for this. I sell it on my website at tipsyartist.com. Uh, so you can find it and do it at home with me. But I did want to give you a nice look at the big visual here to start with. And then we're going to switch camera views. And I'm going to give you a really nice uh, aerial view of me working so that you can see it up close and go with me through the process step by step. All right, so um, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and place this off to the side. And then... Let me find my little peepers here, my little glasses, and we're going to switch camera views. All right, so here we go. I have to put these on so I can see. And there it is. Okay. All right, now I'm going to scoot over here and get my filming. All right. Now I'm going to get the model in place so I can see it. Ta da! All right, and so I've got in your painting kit, you'll have this little model so you can see, and then of course you'll have me teaching you nearby. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our tools and everything that we have. So your kit will come with the canvas and the traceable and all your tools. So it'll come a little stuff like this, with a little party blower in there if you wanna have some festive fun and your paint and your plates and your apron and your napkins. And so the only thing you're gonna have to get will be your bucket of water. So other than that, you'll be all set with everything that you need. All right, so, and then I've got a little bit of a start over here. Got some white out ready to go. All right, so let's talk about this first step with prep for your traceable. So uh, this is your traceable here and I do have it secure to the canvas. So let's talk about how to do that first. Uh, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna place your transfer paper on the canvas. I tape it uh, right up near the edge, only at the top. I wanna make sure that I can lift and check my work as I go. So I only have it taped up at the top. We're gonna start with uh, just basically uh, taping that transfer paper down and then you want to be real careful that you get the correct side of the transfer paper facing up. So it's a bit more dull. And then when you lift this shinier black side, it's a very dark black, very shiny. You definitely want that facing your canvas. And that's what will allow the transfer to happen when you apply pressure. So this dull side, you want that facing up and you want that shinier, darkest black facing the canvas. All right, so we've got that taped, you can see just taped up here at the top. And then I place this right in the center. And with this particular one, the placement is I just have it lined up at the very top and I just tape tape here and here. Um, I do have some tape in your painting kit too, or you can use some scotch tape of your own, which is a bit more, uh, oh gosh, I hit this thing. It's okay, it's a different camera. All right, um, so, I've got this all taped down, ready to go. And then let's talk about how to get the transfer done. So I've got my pencil here and I basically just draw right over the top. Every place you see a line, I'm gonna draw right over the top and that's going to give that transfer over the top. And then this is optional, but if you wanna do that shading on there too, you can do that as well. What I do though, is I turn the pencil over to the side and I kind of just shade on the side like that. And you're, you're gonna be painting over the top of it anyway, but basically it's just a nice visual reference to kind of give you an idea of where some things are before you get started. So go ahead and just do a little example of that to begin with. All right, now let me lift up and show you. So see how it just looks like a little bit of natural shading with the pencil, but that's our transfer paper. It did that for me. So that is optional. All right. So I have worked ahead, as you can see, and I went ahead and did all of my transfer work. But what's so crucial about taping first 
is that I can check to make sure that everything is traced before I let go of this up here. So, cause you don't want to get going and realize, oh my gosh, I lost, I forgot to do an eye or a nostril. And then you lift all that up and then you're having to freehand it. Cause you can't, there's no way to line it back up again. So I definitely make sure that I have all the work done and then I can go ahead and remove this from the back. So you just you know, pull it off here. All right. Okay, so this is ready to go. And then I did one other step, which I really feel like helps beginners a lot. I went ahead and took the permanent marker. You have one of these in your kit and I did a hard line. Um, it's really critical that you do it, especially on the eyes and the nostrils for sure. Um, but I tend to do it kind of just all over. The only place that I don't hard line are just all the first strokes. I just go ahead and let the graphite do the work there. But this will really help out. It bleeds through the paint um, initially to keep your trace intact so that you don't lose all your hard work with your tracing. Um, and then I didn't do the grass. I went ahead and just left that alone. But everything else, I've got a hard line. So that gives us a really good foundation. All right, so we're done using these two tools. And um, what you can do with me is, you know, if you need to catch up, obviously, then you can just put me on pause and you can do that through the entire class. You can rewind, uh, pause, you know, anything that you need to do to kind of just keep the pace. So there's no rush. All right, I'm gonna place these off to the side here. All right, so I've got my brushes here. Let's talk about my little brushes. I've got my mama brush. And then I have my little buddy brush and then I have my little bit brush. Now they're all a little bit stiff to begin with. Uh, so I will need to put them into the water uh, before we get started. But we're gonna get started with that beautiful blue skies. That's gonna, that's gonna be our first step here. All right, so I've got a little bit of my titanium white out. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab some primary cyan blue and your paint will have this a little silver foil liner there. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off so the paint flows freely from the tube. I'm gonna go ahead and always recap. That keeps these from getting dried out and lasting a lot longer for you. All right, now I'm gonna grab some Viridian. This will give us like a hint of some teal or some turquoise to our sky, which is quite lovely. A little pea size amount there. Recap. All right, now, this is off to the side, just like that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with our mama brush, biggest brush that we've got. And I'm gonna go ahead and place it into the water just a little bit, and then we're just gonna dry off. That way our bristles are nice and moist and flexible and ready to go. All right, we're gonna start to mix these up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the brush, kind of use it like a little scoop or a shovel. I'm gonna pick up a nice big dollop of the white, little touch of the blue, and then a little touch of the blue. And we're gonna mix all those together. That's my sweet puppy coming in. All right, so that's pretty light. You can, if you love that shade, you can keep it that way or you can darken it up a little bit more. A little bit more of that primary cyan blue. All right, so that's quite lovely. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to work this into the background. And again, you can intensify the blue a little bit more if you want. If you want it to be darker, you can just keep on with that primary cyan blue and even more viridian if you want. So that's up to you. start to work this into my sky. I'm going to, to get good surface coverage, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my hand a little bit more over to the side. Kind of work with the flat side of the brush facing the canvas and then a little bit of water. And this is when that hard line ink works out well. See how that tree is bleeding through? That's gonna be beautiful. With that way we don't have to do a lot of challenging cut and work around it. So I can just do a nice little overpaint over the top. 
and it just bleeds right through. I've added a little bit of water to the paint as well so that it does help the paint flow into the pores of the canvas. Also nice, because if without the water, see how you get that little bit of that peekaboo, the canvas is still peeking through there. So you add a little bit of water and it really helps it flow into the surface area. And you have to do that cut and work around the edge. I turn the brush more like I'd hold a pencil. That gives me that thinner line edge to do that more delicate line work around the shape of the cow. Now I'm going to come in just underneath the ear and do a little fill in there. Do a little bit of crisscross back and forth, get that paint a little bit of texture. Make sure we've got good coverage. And nice texture on the surface area. And then a little bit over the top of the fur here. And again, it's still bleeding through, so we're good on that. But there's my shape. That's what we love about that. Bit of water, and again, our primary some blue, our Viridian, and some white. Keep going in for a little bit of water just to help that paint flow. And let's turn that hand a little bit more over to the side. Some nice coverage in there. Look we'll around that fur. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a slight overlap on top of the fur. That way, we're gonna have that fur come back up over the front, but we want to make sure we have enough sky coming in behind it. A little line work there. Turn this. Over to the side. A little bit of crisscross back and forth. Get some nice coverage in there. See a little peek through there. I'm going to go ahead and go over that if I can. All right. Beautiful color. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and rinse out completely and dry off. One more round. So, and as I'm rinsing out, firm pressure spin round and round and round. It helps release the paint. And then do a little press here. Okay. All right. Uh, now we're going to get some beautiful green for our grass. Let's go ahead and get some bright yellow green. Do a little resize amount over here. And we already have some Viridian out that we could touch into a little bit, but I'm also going to grab some cadmium green. Resize amount. Okay, we can still use the mama brush and we're going to mix up a little bit of this beautiful green. And you know what? I, need, I have little slight touches of yellow, so I think that's in about two. It's noticing that. Now we're here. So I'm going to take a little bit of this bright yellow green, a little bit of cadmium green, mix that together. 
And then a little bit of white in there too, good coverage. A little bit of water. And then we're gonna go ahead and work this into our glass. All right, so we're getting to a place where you've got this hard black line that is bleeding through and you're like, well, tipsy, I don't like that showing. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, I'm gonna go right up to that line and I'm gonna grab a little touch of my Viridian and I'm gonna just do a little line right over the top of that other hard black line. Okay, and that nicely covers it. And I'm going to do a soft little blend underneath here. Work that in. Softly fade that. And work that back and forth. And just do sweeping horizontal strokes just back and forth here. And grab a little bit of yellow too as I go and kind of work that in. Grab a little bit more of that bright yellow green. And even that uh, graphite line is peeking through there, and that's good because we can start to, when we get to that point, we can have it, we can start to work on a little bit more of the grass texture there. Again, just sweeping horizontal strokes back and forth. Touching into a little bit of that bright yellow green, cadmium green, just continue to work that in back and forth here. And I've got some cutting work I need to do around the eggs. So I'm gonna turn the brush more like a pencil. Like that curve. And then those eggs. And then just continue to sweep this in, horizontal strokes back and forth. You can grab a little bit of Viridian too and just do little soft pushes through there, just back and forth. The paint's still wet, that's a great time to do it. Get a nice soft fade and then clean the two. And work this into the bellies. Sweeping strokes back and forth. And I'll do my cutting. Let's grab a little bit more water. Okay, now we're going to do a little cutting around that egg. I'm just going to sweep that back and forth. Make sure we have full coverage. Turn that brush a little bit more over to the side, parallel to the canvas. It'll give us the flat side of the brush facing the canvas, and that allows it to let more of that paint just rest on the surface there. I'm going to touch it yellow. Over here to this side, a little more yellow. All right, now I'm going to start to add a little bit of shadow in here. So I'm going to start to do a little bit of shadow and just straight little pulls. So more of that line edge and just kind of quick pulls up and then lift off with a light hand. And this is our Viridian, just quick pulls. Find the blades of grass here, quick pulls. And we'll just do this. Through the top here. Switch the angle 
Move this way a little bit. Pops this way. Oops. A little bit of a shadow and leave that tree up there. I just work the brush a little bit side to side, right hand. Yeah, maybe a little bit of right hand. Work that in back and forth. All right, now let's bring the lens out. Dry off. Okay, and um, let's see here. Now we're going to go ahead and start to work on the base of our Highland cow here. So we need to mix up a nice base coat. And we're going to go ahead and use some cadmium orange. Let's take all of that. And a little bit of the Mars black. So when we mix black and orange together, it makes brown. Let's just do a little bob over here to the side, the pea size amount. Oh no, I lost my breath. Roll away. Hold on. I'm gonna put these on. Actually, I'm gonna put these over here to the side until I use them. Okay. All right, we're using Mama still, and I'm gonna take some water, and I'm gonna take some of that orange and a little tiny touch of the black, and see if that made that brown pretty quick. And I want this to be the consistency of it. I want it to be kind of um, very loose, but a lot of water to it. It's almost like a watercolor consistency. And just a little bit of black is going to give us that light brown. Water. So again, very watery. I want a nice light wash. It's almost like a rust color. I'm going to place this over the top. Little tiny Flicks of hair. Yeah. It gets on the horn, not a big deal. Again, this is just a base coat. I'm not careful around the eyes. It's so light though and watery, which ideally that's the consistency you should also have. If it does happen to go over the eyes, it's not a big deal, but I'm going to try to be really careful. And preserve that. Now with the nose, I'm just going to go right over the top. And we're going to go ahead and fill in the top of the ears. And top of this ear here. A nice base coat. So I cover the entire cowl. Sweep those brush strokes back and forth. I didn't work there. Mm 
All right. Great foundation. Beautiful. All right. Very nice. All right. Let's go ahead and rinse out. Dry off. And then, um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and start to work on our horns. We're going to get a nice base cut there. We're going to use Little Buddy. And we're going to take a little dot of the white, little touch of the black. We're going to mix those two together. This is going to give us a dark charcoal uh, gray. I'm going to press back and forth. I'm going to have a teeny amount of water to that. Hold it like a pencil. We're going to go ahead and get just some nice charcoal gray into that horn shape there. I'm going to go all the way up to that point. And then down. down. And just using the line edge of the brush. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. All right. So again, a little bit of water, our white and our black. Burn press. Nice thin point there on the edge. And then I'm going to work that into the horn. Lovely. All right, let's rinse out. Get my thumb pressure. Run it off. Okay. All right, so now we need to go ahead and start to work on the uh, shading. Now, my little bit's real stiff, so I need to put it into the water, get it loosened up. All right, see how it's nice and flexible here. Is that a little? My, this is kind of unusual, but my brush needs a haircut. <laughs> So it's got just like a little tiny and it's kind of bother me. So I'm going to do a little tiny angle cut right there on the end. That's all I needed. Just a little tip there. It was like, nope, I don't like that. All right. So little bits all ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and dip into the pure white and... I'm going to go ahead and do a light drag on the side here. So I'm going to take this and just kind of lightly drag on the side of the brush. And then you can kind of take it more to that angle, to that point right there. But then when it's this thicker part of the horn, you can do a light like drag on the side. I'm just kind of go that back and forth. There's a little bit of fun texture. Okay, and then let's go to the other side. Can I get the fullness of the brush? I'm gonna do a little turn here, get better placement and parallel to the canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and hold this for a little drag. It's that fun texture, light, light touch. I'm gonna fix that in a minute. And then we do a little line all the way up to the end here. All right, so if you do what I just did, I'm gonna just clean this up, take my little bit brush, no, I'm sorry, little buddy. And I just take a little bit of water and just clean that up just a little bit there. Easy peasy, okay. Now, 
continue on. I, I love this texture that I get by just kind of holding the brush over on the side. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that little tiny line, finish that out all along the bottom. And then just kind of lightly take that over to the side there. All right, so that gives a, that fun texture and highlight on the horn there. A little bit more here. All right, really pretty. All right, so we have our start there. I'm going to push this up a little bit. Okay. All right, so now um, I'm going to, let's see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to start to work on the fur now. This is a lot of fun. I love working on the fur. All right, so we need to get our colors in place. We can just start to dabble in all of them. So I'm going to get some more cadmium orange, another good dollop of that. And we can definitely create some more brown. That'll just create, we'll do that with our black, our Mars black. I also want to make sure that I have nearby the cadmium yellow. Oh, well, let's remember that. And let's grab some more primary yellow. That's always a lot of fun. And perhaps a tiny amount of some cadmium red would also be kind of fun too. You know, press it with that. And maybe a little bit of some primary magenta. It can also be fun. That'll give us a little bit of pink. It could be fun in there. Beautiful. Okay, so all right, let's see here. We're gonna go ahead and do oops, more brush. Let's do little bit brush. This is our smallest brush. And we're gonna go ahead and take some of our white and a little bit of that primary yellow. That orange too. And a little bit of water. So a really nice peachy consistency. And we're gonna go ahead and start to just kind of pull straight up here. Little tiny bits of hair. Get more water. Let that paint flow. Little tiny short strokes that have a tiny amount of curve to them. And then I'm going to go in and start to add a little bit of that yellow and the white in there too. Okay, add some dimension and some different highlights. Now I've got some of that brown, I'll start to push into that too and work that in. Little tiny dash strokes over and over again. More of that orange and a little bit of this brown. We still have that purple floor, so I'm going to work that in. If you need to mix them some more, remember it's just black and the orange. And get a little bit of a deeper tone here. I'm just going to do a soft little bit of the curl. So the stroke kind of feels like you make a little parentheses like that. So we're going to do some of that over the top of that horn and start to do the soft curve here. Soft curve over the horn. Now, um, start to do a little bit more of that brown and the soft curves kind of going up. And then we're going to have to start switching directions here a little bit too. So now we're going to start to take the brush curve down. So we're going to come down a little bit more of that brown. 
So soft curves, again, it kind of feels like soft curves, that parentheses stroke, but we're going to take it in a downward motion. This time I go towards this side of the face and my curve kind of switches to this side like this. If I go to this side, then I'll switch that curve over to the other side. Then I'm going to go in for a lighter cream color over the top. Some of that yellow, hit that in there too. A lot of those fun highlights are coming in. That yellow and that white, it's very golden and pretty. So it's a lot of repetition. And just go from side to side and soft, curvy strokes. And you can hit a little bit of that pink in there too. That's fine in there. Put that primary and magenta. All right, now I have a little bit of shadow underneath the ear that I want to get underneath. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of that black with that orange. We're going to darken that back a little bit. And we're going to do kind of a, this is that, I'm going to do a soft section of brown just right in through here, just all underneath. I want that shadow to be there first. So here underneath, using the soft flat side of the brush, let's go ahead and get a lot of shadow in there. Give a soft curve. And let's just go ahead and cover all that area with that shadow. Okay. And linen round while I'm doing the shadows. I'm going to go ahead and kind of hit this side of the face here. And this side of the face. And a little bit goes up to the eye. And just a little bit goes up to the eye. A little shadow there. We've got, this is that little, almost looks like a mouth area in here. So we're going to come in and hit this with a darker shadow underneath. Get this darkened in so we don't lose that sense of where that shadow is. And then this is already blackened in from our trays, but you can kind of paint in that black line over the top if you want there too. Now I'm going to take a little bit more water and hit this dark, blackish, darker brown. And we're going to hit this shadow here too. So we're going to get some dark shadow work done. I'm going to add a little bit of soft curve to it. Coming in next to that egg and it's pretty dark in there. And we're going to just pull this straight up. And we have a little bit of a shadow here on this side. And just do a soft curve stroke all the way up. And a little bit two more pulls here. All right, so we've got great shadow work in place. Now let's rinse out. We're going to start to lighten up a little bit. I'm going to go into more of those beautiful little, little bit of brown, a little bit of peach. And we're going to go ahead and start to sweep this. Now we can come in and sweep a few little longer hairs over the top of that shadow over the ear. So a little soft curves. Pull that down. A few little drags completely over the top. 
you definitely want this to flow over the sky so that that, you know, that ear is in the foreground. You can definitely see how there's just a lot of repetition in this stroke over and over again, but you definitely have to keep in mind to change directions with it. So like on this side, the curve is this way. When we come to this side, we'll start to go this way. Put a yellow, lighten up. A little bit more highlights. So I grab a little bit more of that yellow and maybe, maybe a little bit of white in there too to really lighten up there. And I do want to slow down a little bit when I get near the eyes and slow down my stroke, not be so, you know, because cover up. Now, sometimes the Highland cow does have their eyes completely covered, and it's very cute in a painting. So, if, you know, you own cows or you just like cows that have their eyes covered, you can always go that route, too. But I'm going to slow down quite a bit and just make sure that my eyes are still peeking through there. And then soft little strokes. When we get over the top of the nose, then I'm going to kind of go to more of like a, you know, this kind of a curve and just switch side to side. Got a little bit of red. That's a bottle of red. The color in there. A little bit there, a little soft red there, a little soft curve of red there. Go we'll back to some of that yellow and the white, lighten up a little bit. Softly work this in. And with every stroke, you'll notice it'll kind of pick up some of your color that you had from before. And so um, that's okay. It adds a little bit of variety to it. It's really lovely. So I get a few little strands here over the top. Now I'm going to slow down because I'm going to be getting real close to this little eye. By the way, that, I don't know if you can hear that noise in the background. It's my puppy dogs. She's kind of snorting. It's kind of funny. I don't know if you can hear that. I have the noise canceling thing on, so you may not be able to hear the dog. And a little bit of brown. A few little light hits of that down through that stroke there. A little bit of yellow and then come back over the top. I like that area again. A little hits of texture up the top again here. Get a little bit more thickness. Grab it more of that peach. We like sections of that. that. Orange. Using more of the thick side of the brush and just lay in that texture over the top. Make that a little bit thicker. Do that over here too. Be nice and generous with it over the top. Pop that kind of down in front of what shadow we created. And let's grab a little bit more of red. And here.
So that red or orange. Brown. Soft tapers, and I'm going to grab some of that yellow too. We're going to get in there and hit that with a much brighter highlight. A little bit of white with that yellow too. And let's make a few of those little strands kind of go off the edge. Light papers off the side there. I'm going to come over to this side, get a little bit more of that yellow and white. Soft papers off the side. Keep adding dimensions of highlight into the fur. A little bit more of that orange and yellow and white. Keep adding that A bit of that yellow, the side here, soft sections right in through here, tiny little curves. A bit more that right and yellow. A little coral into the paint. You just get tiny little strokes. I'm going to lighten that part of it right here. A little more that white. Super tiny little flips. Go right to the side. And here. Okay. Yeah, we need to start working on our nose area here. So let's rinse out and rinse, yeah, dry off, rinse out, dry off. And I'll grab some of that primary magenta, go draw on that. And our white. Pink. A little bit of water. Let's go ahead and push this into color. Very careful around those nostrils and just work in this light pink. I'm just going to almost work in a blocky little squared off section here of the pink. And that will rinse on it, dry off. Now we're going to go back into that brown. And then we're just going to do a little sweep over the top of that pink while the pink is still wet. And we're going to just sweep that brown in. And we'll have a little bit. Paper 
It just kind of feels like you paint a little smiley face there. And just a little bit of a shadow here on this side. And then I didn't even set my brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of white. So it has a little bit of that residual brown in there. So it's not just a pure white. It's got a little bit of that brown in it with it. And I'm going to make what looks like a little happy face right here. Sweep that across. Start from one side of the mask right through the other and sweep it across a nice little happy face. And then we're going to do another little, almost like a happy face underneath here. Teeny one. Another teeny one right here. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to open. I go around on that side of the soft curve and then one more soft curve here. I'm going to go back into that pink and then do a little bit of a soft name here on that white. Right. That's out. And with a clean brush, a little bit of water, just soften that just a little bit. And go back in for one and white, do I need that lighter white right there? White's still a bit wet. Uh, and transition between the two. Okay. All right, now a little bit of the gray. So we're gonna do a little bit of black and the white. Mix those two together. A little twirl in there. I mean, we're gonna do like a little soft line of that gray right there. Just barely touch the canvas, light gentle hand, just underneath the nostril area there. Here's up underneath that nostril area. All right, good job. And then rinse out. All right, now I'm going to do a few little. Um, well, I've got that light gray to do a little bit of an eyelash here. So I'm going to take my little bit brush and do that little twirl into that charcoal gray. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter, add a little bit of white into it. I'm going to do a little twirl over the top. And then over the top of the eye here, I'm just going to act like I'm putting a little bit of eyeliner. And I'm going to have it come down. Okay, so there's our little eyelashes. And then again, right over the top here. So a few little eyelashes here. All right, good job. Just get away of this. I put my head too far, but you will see. Now I'm, I've got my light charcoal gray, a little bit of that brown. Do that little twirl in there. Now I'm going to come underneath the eye and just do a soft curve, almost like that happy face stroke. And just underneath the bottom part of the eye, just a very tiny little stroke right there. Okay. Just give him a little bit of an accent. All right. Now I'm still going to continue working in with that charcoal gray on the little bit of paint. Charcoal gray, just do a little bit more white. And some of that brown. Into that brown. Mix that together. A little twirl in there, and let's start to work this into the bottom part of that mouth area. So little tiny pulls over the top of that shadow we created. So again, little tiny curves like that. There's a curve. And we just lift off of the light hand, just little tiny furry strokes at the end and left in place. Okay. And then it's some light. 
And then I still need to work on this little section here. So we've got a little bit more of that orange and the brown. And we're going to do just some light, very texture of that in here. Work that in over the top. And pull that out to the side. We'll layer that. Add a little bit more of that now and then with that orange and just do little side tweaks. Give a little bit more of that texture to the side. And then come back in with a little bit more of that yellow and more of that paint sweat. We're going to just squeeze you that out again. Grab a little bit more of that yellow and just kind of do a light little texture. Yellow, light texture. Let's soften that in with that rusty brown that we had, that orange brown we had. Let's have a little bit more white. Just taking a little look here in the monitor, seeing how I'm doing. Rinse out. I'm going to go back into this brownish gray, and I'm going to do a little bit of a dark underline here of my horn. i push that in there and side sweep it here underneath. A little bit of texture. And then here, a little bit of texture. This is that brownish gray that we mixed at. Underneath that horn, the bottom section of it. Okay. And another kind of a look see here over the top. So you can add a few more little highlights if you want, a few little hairs coming in over the top. A lot of playfulness you can continue to add with your highlights. So that can really kind of go on for a really long time. Very therapeutic. It's kind of, at some point, I will have to stop. <laughs> That's what we have to teach up steps, but just make sure I've got all of my hair texture done. Soft little touches there. Add some more dramatic red in there too, if you want, or even a little bit of peak in there is kind of fun too. So very pretty. So we're going to that pink. A little bit of that dramatic dark hot pink happening in there as well. All right, so it's looking really cute. All right, we can go ahead and start to work on. I can have a look here in the monitor. It's looking good. All right, let's go ahead and start to work on some of these fun little um, Easter eggs here. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to need some more. 
bright yellow green. All right, and I'm gonna use my little buddy brush here. And we're gonna grab some of that bright yellow green, a little bit of white to it as well. And we're gonna go ahead and work into this egg and just get some of that really pretty bright yellow green in there. And with a nice thick coat over the top, you can turn your hand a little bit more over to the side. Oh, very nice. Do you have any more? I've got one over here that's like a little bit of a, it's got some ver more viridian in it, so I'm going to add a little bit more of that viridian. Let's just get some more of that in out. That is a lovely color. Yeah, with that. And then we have a darker turquoise here in front. So I'm going to go ahead and have some of that primary cyan blue. And yeah, let's go ahead and make the base here and a little bit of water to it to make it a little bit more fluid. So when you're doing the curve, you can hold the brush a little bit more using a line edge to do that curve. And then when you have to come back in and fill in, then you want to turn your, turn your handle more over to the side. And they get some nice coverage over the top. Let's go ahead and rinse that. And then I'm going to take my little bit brush and we're going to do a little bit of just this light blue. And we have just like a kind of a thin little push of this. Let me get to that turquoise. I'm just going to do a little kind of push of that here over the top. It's just kind of abstracted, really. And you can make your coloring over the top of the eggs a little bit more precise. If you are more of a fan of just blocked in coloring stripes, you can certainly do that. I'm going to do just kind of a fun push of color there. Rinse out. All right. Uh, let's see. Use my clean little buddy brush and we're gonna do some light pink and then we're also gonna start to work on some violet in here as well. So we're gonna lighten this up and we're gonna have some lavender. Oh, let's do a little violet right there. All right, first let's grab some white and mix this in with our, I'm sorry, this is a primary magenta. And so white primary magenta, and we're gonna do a nice sweep of this over this egg.
All right, so we, now we turn it over to the side to get nice fullness here over the top. All right, and then once out, we're going to go in for more of a lavender look. So we're going to grab some white and black. Violet. Push this into this bag here. And then we're going to push this over on this side. You see, I have a little bit of that white still just kind of showing through, but I like the look of it. It creates a nice little texture. Soften that out, feather that out. Let that set up for a bit. And now I'm just going to go and work on the lighter, brighter colors over here. So I'm going to go back right to our uh, yellow. And we'll work that in. Smooth that out. And let's grab a little bit of that orange in there. Let's do a little sweep of that. And give it a top. And now we're going to go back into that yellow. It's got a little bit of orange in there, too. Okay. Soft mix is nice. Move that out. Let's touch it. And the top. A little touch of white. A little texture. And I'm going to rinse out here. Touch into um, primary magenta. I'm just kind of lightly kind of push this onto the top. Just kind of do a little few pushes of it. And then a little bit more of that primary magenta will come around this egg here, little sweeps of that. Light drag of that over the top. I'm just going to crisscross that back and forth with the texture. Right. And then we're going to do some, it's more primary bits and it's disappearing. A little dollop of that. And we're going to get some stripes in here with little buddy. So we're going to do a stripe of that across, and a little stripe of that across. We'll do another one here. And it's right out. 
dry off. Let's grab our little bit brush and let's do some light blue. Put a twirl in there. And then we're just going to do a little stripe across there. Put some white and then light blue. And do a little stripe across here. Right. And we've got like a little tiny touch right there, a little accent. And then let's do a few little flowers here. So let's grab some white and that light blue. Put that on the edge of the little bit brush. A little bit more white and then I'm just going to make a little flower here so I'm just going to do a little press little tiny pulls a little flower show do another one a little more white a little pale light blue and then we're going to do a little pull of that here so a little pull 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 it's real light and just kind of a little abstract flower there. Oh, actually, there's a lot here too. Twirl into the paint, and then we're just going to do a little pull, tiny little pulls into the center to make those little flowers. And then let's do some in a different color. So I'm going to come in with um, some cadmium yellow here. And we're just going to do a little pull. pull. And we've got some more. I'm going to do more of that primary yellow with that cadmium yellow. And this one I'm going to do over here on this on the side here. Got a little white for that too. Lighten that up a little bit. So it's like you just do a little bit of a press, and then you kind of pull it to the center. A bit of a press and then pull to the center. And you angle each one out to the side. I'm going to do a few more on this side too. A little bit of white. I like that white in there, so I'm going to come back and hit this again with another touch of it to take the nose up. We have flowers on our eggs. We'll do a little bit more of that orange on this one. We'll do one here. Okay. All right, now we need to do the little center. So I'm going to do a little bit of this primary magenta. I'm going to do a little touch of that right there in the middle. You can experiment with different colors too if you'd like. I'm just, I'm really liking that little bit of primary magenta right in the middle. And then we're going to make another little primary magenta flower right here. This is the many one. And then here. Wait for this to spot. 
Let's put that there. That primary magenta. Let's do another one right there. Okay. Perfect. And then we'll do a little bit of yeah, right in the middle of that one. And then right in the middle of this one. Oh, and then this one. Okay. All right. Lovely. All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn this a little bit. We're going to start to work on the tree and put a little bit of water and the black. Coral, and then I'm just going to start to work into that tree shape. Oh, you can't even see it. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to work into this tree shape. We still have the trace that's showing. A little taper there. So it bled through, which is perfect. That's what we wanted. I'm just going to follow it and then lift off with a light hand when we get to the end of the branch. And get that little twirl into the black paint to keep the end of the brush nice and thin. You can make like little V's off of the end of the branch. But we start in the center of the tree and then you can lift off with a light hand. You can see I'm kind of adding to the branches a little bit. Now I need to continue filling this in, so I'm going to turn it back. I'm just going to fill this in. This is the trunk of the tree. All right. All right. And I'm just doing a little last check here. I guess I could add one little sweep of white. See what are the details here? We have a do we do have a little white stripe. It's kind of optional, but we're going by the model here, so I'm doing a little white stripe there. Okay. And then I think we're pretty much done, but we can add a few more details here with more grass. Kind of finish up with some of that. So I'm doing a little bit of this cadmium green and that bright yellow green with a little twirl in here. Um, you can add a few more little sprigs of this, you know, up through here if you want it. A little different than what we have in the model, but it's kind of fun. Tiny little blades of grass. A few of those here and there. A little teal and we want to give a little bit of shadow that's over ribbing. Okay. I'm doing a sweet touch of side to side there. This is that viridian, just little tiny holes up. 
We're just doing tiny little bits of grass here. And you can kind of come back with that lighter green, do a little sweep over the bottom, just kind of back and forth. Soften it a little bit, just kind of fine in there. And then, of course, you can always just come back in through the base here and just do more little light, soft vertical pulls to make little blades of grass to come up through the base. Add some more layers of that grass. This is, a, again, a lot of our Viridian paint and a little bit brush. You can have a few of these little blades of grass come up around the Easter eggs. Little soft curves, little soft blades of grass. And what makes those little Easter eggs add a little bit of water in there too. That was my viridian that I just did. Just a little bit of that. Put a grassy texture here in the background. And then I want my, because I did a little bit of that, now I want my hair to come back. That's going to be a little bit of hair here right out over the front again. But that's definitely in the foreground. So you want that in the front. All right. All right, so beautiful, it's looking great. I think we're gonna go ahead and finish up now. And so we can go ahead and sign our masterpiece. And what I recommend doing, mine's not quite dry, so I'm gonna do mine here in a little bit, but you wanna wait for this to completely set up and dry. And then you can use your little bit brush, not little bit brush, well, you can use that too. If you wanna be more of a purist and paint on your signature, but I like to use the permanent marker that comes in the kit and I just like to sign here at the base. But, or you can do it with the paintbrush and you can go into the paint. What you wanna do is add a little bit of water, do a little twirl into that black paint, just like that. Twirl it into a nice fine point. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it would look like, but you can certainly paint on your signature as well. So I'll do a little bit here. I'll just do Tiffany there. All right. Good job. All right. So again, thank you so much for coming today to spend some time with me and paint this beautiful Highland cow. We had so much fun. And all the supplies are on our website, tipsyartist.com. So we just appreciate y'all. Thank you again so very much. Have a beautiful day and much love to y'all. Toodles.